For somebody who prophesies and is concerned with being able to prophesy at a forensic level or with a high level of accuracy and regularly, the understanding of your specific prophetic mission will guide your roadmap or will serve as a light to you as you travel the journey on the prophetic path. It takes someone who has come to identify his placement in the prophetic to be able to maintain forensic prophecy on a regular note. This means that you've been able to identify your specific prophetic relevance. That way you'll be able to channel all of your energies in a particular direction that is wound around your specific prophetic concern or message. Vast of the problems we have in the prophetic circles today is the fact that somebody is able to prophesy or is called as a prophet or is called as an apostle and begins to prophesy and want to do what may be culturally called prophecy in a contemporary society. But the truth is that in spite of the cultural awareness of the prophetic thing in today's society as we have it, if we must excel in the prophetic and be in tune with God as well as maintain prophecy with a high level of accuracy, it must be known first that such a possible must follow his specific area or line of calling. Let me give this example. If you study medicine and surgery, for instance, at MBBS level, when you return for master's, you may decide to specialize in anatomy. Someone else may decide to specialize in surgery. Another person may decide to specialize in clinical medicine. Another person may decide to specialize in gynecology, oterogenology, or even immunology or pathology, as the case may be. When you return for PhD, you may decide to specialize in any of these areas. The person you can call an ideal medical practitioner is somebody who has a PhD in any of the vast subsections of the medical program, which may mean that this person has come to specialize in clinical medicine at PhD level or is specialized in surgery at PhD level. So that the person that just did a degree in medicine and surgery at MBBS level, as it's often referred to in some countries, cannot be called a professional in medicine. Bringing that to the prophetic sphere, not everyone who can prophesy is a professional prophet. There are some prophets that are just operating at that level of the first degree of medicine stuff I just described. So the person you can refer to as a prophet is somebody who can deal with prophecy at a forensic level, satisfactory to God and man. is an individual who has gone PhD level, so to say, spiritually with the prophetic thing. This requires specialization. So the day as a prophet or as an apostle you discover your specific prophetic mission and give it the required attention and build yourself to the point where you now are versatile with your specific prophetic mission so much that you are not concerned what the other prophet is doing, whether he is doing better than you in terms of gaining accolades or crowds or he is doing better than you with specific prophetic cases like this prophet prophesies about people who have the issue of stagnation and praise for them and eventually these people are greeted with breakthrough you know you are nowhere concerned about the result of the other prophet apart from being motivated or provoked into your specific action that is when you have begun the prophetic journey. So we have a lot of people in the prophetic fold today, especially among teeming prophets, upcoming prophets. They just want to do anything they see the renowned prophets of the contemporary time doing. Whatever they hear the other prophet is doing, they just want to do it without taking their time to know exactly what they stand for. This has brought about a lot of confusion in the prophetic circle. And this has wrecked a lot of prophetic destinies. This has also wrecked a lot of destinies connected with such shallow prophets when it comes to the understanding of the given prophetic mission. You can only be the best in your specific prophetic mission. You can't jump into another person's specific prophetic mission and be number one there and do a satisfactory work with God and for man. Never. When you look into the scripture, you realize that the prophets in the Bible were focused at fulfilling their specific prophetic mission. Our father Abraham was a prophet, but his functionality was fit. So he never struggled to go about prophesying to the Canaanites who were living around him. In fact, Abraham prophesied to none aside 
his family. But he was a prophet. Think about the prophet David. He was a prophet confirmed, but his functionality was a leadership. So he led in the military. He led as an instrumentalist. He led as a singer. He led as the king of Israel. Politically, he was as well a leader. That was David's own functionality. Elijah was a prophet, but his functionality was national revolution. And that was what he focused on. And his national revolution finally zoomed again, will bring our focus to his concern of redirecting the people to God. Elisha was a prophet, but his functionality was solving civic problems. So Elisha was one of the prophets that handled the one-on-one thing that most of us do today. He prophesied to the Shunammite woman about her condition of barrenness and how it would be terminated and she would have a child. He prophesied to the people of Israel how that the famine was coming to an end and that they were going to have surplus of food in the city the following day. He prophesied to the king of Israel about his enemies coming and how he was going to overpower them. He prophesied to another king of Israel about how he was going to defeat the Syrians that were coming up against him. He prophesied to the wife of the sons of the prophet about how she was going to come out of debt. So Elisha's prophetic functionality was in civic issues. Isaiah was a prophet, but his functionality was to mentor kings. So Isaiah prophesied to presidents and leaders across the nations of the earth. Jeremiah was a prophet, but looking closely, his functionality was to handle the rod of correction for the Israelites for wandering away from God. Daniel was a prophet, but his functionality was to be a light to the world leading power at the time. This can go on and on. So if you look closely in scripture, you discover that Zechariah was a prophet, Hagar was a prophet, Micah was a prophet. The three of them had the functionality of motivating Zerubbabel. So vast of their work centered on the rebuilding of the temple of God in Israel, post-Babylonian Medopetian captivity. So if you look through the entire scripture, you discover that prophets were given specific mission. It is your specific mission that determines your prophetic message. It is the understanding of your prophetic message that determines the prophetic tools, namely prophetic codes, prophetic senses, you know, prophetic cards you need in order to be able to handle the prophetic with excellence. This in turn determines your relationship with these prophetic tools and your relationship with the prophetic body as a whole so that the prophetic call is not a thing in which you are called to be a photocopy of Apostle Raymond or a photocopy of Prophet Shepard Bushiri or a photocopy of Prophet Yubed Angel. You are original. After working with God for many years, I took your time again in 2017 in a resort in Maputo, Mozambique for 18 days asking God one question. What exactly are you sending me to do? That's about 18 years preaching the gospel before I took out time again to be very sure that I'd gotten it right. And God told me there in Mozambique that Raymond, you are an apostle with a prophetic mandate. So as a prophet, over and over again, you must take out time at least in the beginnings, to be very sure that you have well understood your specific prophetic mission. It is only there that you can, for a lifetime, operate as a prophet or an apostle that prophesies in the prophetic office with accuracy because you're not meddling with another person's work. God will never empower you to do what he didn't send you to do or what he didn't expect you to do to be prophetic prophetically accurate as an apostle in the prophetic office or as a prophet in the prophetic office. The following are the things to look out for once you have discovered and established and are working within the walls of your specific prophetic mission that will serve you to be able to remain prophesying with accuracy and doing so on a better note by the day. Number one, the nature of your ministry. Your specific prophetic mission will determine the nature of the ministry you will build. Whether you're going to start up a church or operate as a ministry that doesn't run church services or not even operate as a ministry but as an individual entity that is only a part of an existing ministry or church. If your specific prophetic mission does not require that you start up a church or start up a ministry and you start up any of these, you're going to fail somewhere along the line and prophetically too, you're going to go bankrupt. And at the end of the day, you will miss it. And lifetime is once. It has to be spent doing the essence of your existence. And when it comes to funding of a church as a result of the demand 
from your specific prophetic mission, you are still going to find out which kind of church you're going to be founding. The fact that I'm a prophet or you are a prophet or an apostle operating in the prophetic office or who is supposed to operate in the prophetic office does not mean that we must all be doing deliverances on Sundays or during a meetings or we must be doing one-on-one -on -one prophecies all the time there are prophets in the prophetic office that teach more than they prophesy or prophesy more than they teach or do more of deliverance than they prophesy as the case may be it all depends on what again your specific prophetic mission requires your specific prophetic mission will furnish you with details about the territory of your operation here i mean the city or cities in which you must operate daniel was a prophet discovered his mission back in Israel, but operated in Babylon as a prophet. Isaiah was a prophet, not particularly hailing from the city of Jerusalem, but eventually found himself operating within Jerusalem because he was a court prophet, having to live around kings. Elijah as a prophet shuttled between cities so that he had sons of the prophets in campuses dispatched across the land of Israel in coming to confront the king to stimulate national spiritual revolution. So every prophet who intends to be accurate with prophecy must understand the issue of territory. In fact, I can make it clear to you that the moment you step out of the territory of your operation, there is that chance that you start missing the prophecies you were getting with accuracy before. You can't operate in a territory that you have not conquered. You cannot conquer a territory that God has not given to you. So you must be very sure as one in the prophetic office that you are located in a territory that God has given to you. Remember that God told Moses, I have not given you as much as a foot in the land of Ammon. Just get that. So that Moses was not permitted to operate prophetically in Ammon. He was only to pass through Ammon with the people of Israel. Whatever he picked there, he was to pay for. But the Canaanites God gave to the children of Israel to conquer, subdue because that was within the prophetic reach of the mission of the man Moses who gave the right hand of ministry to the man Joshua. So they took whatever was given to them for possession. So you must be very sure that you know your region of prophetic operation and everything will work with respect to your ability to prophesy with accuracy like it's magic that you're doing. Number three, success with mission. What I refer to as success with mission here is the issue of your prophetic mission. As a prophet, David upon the death of King Saul, before he ever moved into any of the cities of Judah, asked God, which city must I move to? And God said, Hebron. God gave him the specific location of his prophetic territory, and it was Hebron. So he relocated to Hebron. In the process of time, upon consent from God, he moved from Hebron to Jerusalem. And this as well corresponded with his prophetic successes. Remember that the functionality of David as a prophet was leadership. The prophetic antenna can never be smart in a location that God hasn't given you work to do as a prophet. Number four, security. Everyone in the prophetic office is a potential general of the army of the living God if you are not a general already. As a result of this, you are entitled to benefit from the security structure of the kingdom of God. Angels work with you. They protect you. When Jesus asked, who have you come to look for? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. And he said, I am he. And the soldiers went back and fell down. That significantly spoke of the essence of angelic presence around Jesus Christ. When he spoke, it activated the atmosphere prophetically and uh, the army had to fall flat. Because it is part of your prophetic roadmap to fulfillment. You must be very sure you've understood your specific prophetic mission. This is what makes you to locate your given prophetic territory. And this is what enhances the issue of your prophetic security as one operating in the office of a prophet. And as I try to walk you into the essence of this video, I want to make you understand that like you know your name, whether you are sleeping and snoring and you are aroused and you are being asked what is your name, you will not think twice before you say what your name is when you can know your specific prophetic mission to that point it will enhance everything there is that guarantees your ability to prophesy at a forensic level it will give you all the chance and room there is to be successful with exploring and engaging the tools and platforms and anointing that is accessible to someone operating in the prophetic office and if you are prophesying at the level of the gift of prophecy your contentment with this will enhance your ability to prophesy with the level of accuracy accessible to somebody operating in this level of the prophetic that that way there will be ease as you run your engagement with the prophetic faculty. These are the secrets about forensic prophecy that I intend to unravel so that if you are ready 
there you can be sure that you are doing the right thing if you are not yet there you adjust and get yourself set for the next move of god with your life and ministry so god bless you i want to declare the atmosphere over your life open for the prophetic thing to happen with ease in jesus mighty name <laughs>